Ah, uh, he's gonna run. Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I'm out here on Mountain Hill Reservoir this morning and I'm getting ready to do some ultralight fishing. Now, today's video is gonna be a little bit different than the other ultralight videos you've seen because I'm gonna be using a slightly bigger bait. And most of my ultralight fishing videos, you see me using a one inch Berkeley Gulp Minnow. Today, I'm going with the two and a half inch size and I've got that on a 132nd ounce jig head. And reason for that today is I'm kind of wanting to weed through some of the smaller fish. On the one inch gulp minnows, you catch a, a lot of fish, but you get a lot of small ones too. And today, I'm kind of out here just looking to uh, try to focus on bass, you know, large mouth, specifically small mouth though, because uh, I'm going to be working a bluff wall. I've pedaled upstream from the launch, and I'm going to work this bluff wall all the way down through here, working back toward the car and uh, you know to see what I can catch. I've got a bass tournament coming up later on this month. It's the Fishing for Soldiers tournament which is the biggest kayak bass fishing tournament in East Tennessee. Every year it is an awesome event, very well run and first place gets a brand new Hobie kayak. So it is definitely worth fishing even though I'm not a bass fisherman by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, this year they have opened it up. It's a uh, uh, a tournament where you can pretty much fish anywhere in East Tennessee, but in previous years, Melton Hill hasn't been on the eligible bodies of water that you can fish, but this year it is, so I thought I'd come out here and just see what I can do and uh, uh, see what I can do today, see if it'll be worth fishing later on this month. The advantage of fishing out here, even though this body of water isn't really known as a big bass body of water, is that I won't be dealing with a lot of pleasure boat traffic and a lot of bass boat traffic because this uh, Fishing for Soldiers tournament, it has a bass boat division as well. So if you're on Fort Loudon or Watts Bar, you're gonna be dealing with all those people while you're trying to fish. So I can come out here and probably have this place to myself uh, that Saturday. So, but uh, anyway, guys, I'm gonna go over here and see what I can get. I've, like I said, I'm gonna be fishing this two and a half inch gulp minnow. I've got this on a, a six foot ultralight rod. This is the St. Croix Panfish Series. I've got a Fluger reel with two pound test, uh, trout magnet SOS line. And we'll make our way down through here, see what we can get. Fish. Up here, see what it is. Bluegill. All right, y'all, there he is, fish number one, not a bad size bluegill. Let him go and uh, see what we can do here. Like I said, I'm more, more or less hoping to find some bass out here this morning, but. I love catching bluegill and crappie and everything else. I've said it in all my other ultralight fishing videos. That's the fun thing about ultralight fishing. Every fish is fun on it. Now going to this two and a half inch size gulp minnow and the slightly bigger uh, hook size there on my jig heads, it's going to limit eliminate a lot of the. It's not necessarily going to eliminate a lot of your bites. You're still going to get the the pecks as you bring that bait along but it's going to eliminate a lot of the hookups from the really small bluegill. You know, those three, four, five inch fish, they just won't be able to get the hook in their mouth. But uh, you still catch a good number of bigger size bluegill and crappie and yellow bass, white bass, etc. But really, like I said, what I'm hoping to get into down through here today is you know, hopefully some smallmouth. Bluegill. A decent sized bluegill there, too. There he is. Not oh, bad, man. Pulling off that same tree. Ain't no bluegill right here. Feels like a dang channel cat. That's what it feels like. I see him, feel him spinning down there. Yeah, it is all in old channel cats. Oh, going it. Even when I ain't catfishing, I can't get away from them. <laughs> I may net this one, keep from breaking my line here. Oh, goodness. What the heck? Ah, he's gonna run. 
Uh, he's going to run. Get down there and get ready to net him. I'm using this trout magnet two pound SOS line. And, you know, it's surprisingly strong line. You land big fish on it, but I'm in this Hobie Pro Angler kayak now. And so I'm kind of setting up a little higher off the water than what I am in my outback. I'm going to fish out of it. All right, guys, there he is. Old channel cat on the ultralight, Berkeley Gulp Minnow. Ain't a, ain't a bad channel cat, man. I just don't, uh, you know, channel cats are really fish, but I don't like catching them when I'm catfishing because I'm after bigger fish, and I especially don't like catching them when I'm ultralight fishing because they just get your line all twisted up. But uh, <laughs> he got me excited there when he first thumped it. I knew that wasn't a bluegill that hit. <laughs> Show. That's another one that hit it on the fall. I believe we got some of the bluegill here. I'm not complaining, man. I love catching these bluegill on the ultralight. Oh, he flung my gulp minnow off. Decent sized bluegill right there. Fish on. I'll tell you what, guys, these are some good bluegill today, man. Good bluegill. that thing right there. Yeah. I got my measuring board here. Let me just throw this one on there and see. Yeah, that one's uh, about eight and a half inches there. Look at him. I mean, he's thick, man. That's a good blue kill. <laughs> looking for right there. That's one of them old small mouth. Oh, small jaw. I'll take my time with him. Again, I got two pound line on here, so. I had another one a few minutes ago. I was reeling my jig back in and he followed it all the way up to the side of the kayak. Didn't take it. Wasn't a very big one, but still. Well, no, there's some down in here. Yeah. Smiley. There we go. Welcome sight. That's what I was hoping to find out here. There he is. Let's throw him here on the board and get a length on him, see what he'd go. All right, y'all, that in there, a little under, a little under 14 inches. You know what? That's ruling out water. Yeah, that's the main thing is trying to, I'll put a little mark here on my graph and trying to, because, you know, this whole, Gosh, next mile or so, mile and a half is just bluff wall. And it's got all kinds of just just rocks, little crevices and places for smallmouth to hide. And you know, when you catch one smallmouth, those are schooling fish, they're not alone. So I'll put a mark here on my graph and I'll be able to come back to this and really be able to key in on these areas where I catch fish going down through here. So uh, yeah, that was fun. Let's do it again. Show you here. Let me stand up here so maybe you can see it with the angle. I don't know if it'll show up on camera or not, but there's a log right there. And this bluff wall just comes straight down. I'm sitting in 32 feet of water here where I'm at. But you can see there's just a log there, a piece of a tree that's broke off and fallen down. And right there's where I got that small mouth off of and just got that bluegill. I'm going to keep making some more cast around there. See what else we can pull off of it. There it goes. 
There we go. We got another one on. It's another smallmouth. I guarantee it. Yep, it is. Hopefully my arm wasn't blocking it as he jumped there. It's another one come right off that log. If we can pull him up. That's a little better one right there. That's a little better one. Here, netting. Oh, oh, oh. Get in there. All right, man. Like I said, these smallmouth, man, they ain't never alone. You catch one right there on a place like that, you're gonna have more of them. All right, y'all. Another smallie. Not bad. That one's a little bigger than the other one. Yeah, he ain't that much bigger than the other. He's a little over 14 inches. Hey, that's two in just a few minutes. And that's a good sign. I mean, that's what I'm out here to get. You know, this type of fishing here is a, something that a lot of guys do for smallmouth in the winter months. When it's cold, they'll get up there and, and fish the rocks. It's heated up in the sun. And I find it to be a, just a, you know, a good year-round technique uh, when you got bluff walls of rocks like this, places for smallmouth to hide. And, and uh, you know, I'll, like I said, normally when I'm ultralight fishing, I'm using the one-inch gulp minnows, but I still catch a lot of smallmouth, a lot of largemouth uh, year-round doing that technique. So, you know, going with the bigger size gulp minnow today, the two and a half inch certainly helps eliminate a lot of the smaller bluegill, allows you to get down farther, deeper down in the water column and uh, have a chance at the bigger fish like the bass. But, uh, yeah, that's encouraging. Two in a row. Let's get back to it. Again, y'all, all I'm doing, I'm casting that jig out. I'm just letting it fall all the way down. Most of the fish you catch doing this technique, they're going to hit it on that fall, on that initial fall. So it's important to watch your line as it goes down because a lot of times you won't necessarily feel the bite. Even on a sensitive rod like I'm using today, a lot of times they just barely grab it. And you won't necessarily feel it, but you'll see your line twitch or you'll see your line just start swimming off. And that's when you know to set the hook. Just letting it work all the way down and then once I get it down there on the bottom I know it's down there then I'll just start kind of twitching it and reeling it very slowly back to me it's kind of working it along the bottom there do you get hung up a lot doing this yeah absolutely you're gonna get hung in trees that you're throwing into you're gonna get hung in the rocks on bottom so it's best to have a lot of jigs I know another drawback uh, to this technique is with the gulp minnows themselves, the uh, plastic that Berkeley uses for this is terrible. I mean, it's super soft and tears very easily. And, you know, the one inch size that I normally use, those tear too, but you can usually get several fish off of those. Once you start moving up to the two and a half and the three inch size, you don't catch nearly as many fish on them before you got to replace them just because they they'll tear. You'll get the bluegill down there, they'll rip the tails off of them. And, uh, you know, so are they the best value as far as soft plastics though? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But do they catch the heck out of fish? They sure do. And you'll catch everything on them. And that's why I like them. So, you know, for me, they're, they're worth the extra cost for me just because of the, the results I get out of them. There's fish. Good timing right there as I was talking to the camera. <laughs> I think this is a, yeah, that's another one of these bluegill right here. It's another good one though. Another good size bluegill. Come on up in here. These bluegill today have all been superb. I said, them gulp minnows, man, I catch the heck out of bluegill all year long on the gulp minnows. But, you know, usually you're using the one-inch size, so you're catching a lot of, the, you're catching a lot of those four-inch, five-inch bluegill. The bigger hook is what really decreases the, the hookups on those. They'll still be pecking all the way down through there, but 
you won't get the hookups and since you're not getting the hookups that allows that jig to just fall deeper down in the water column and get down there where a lot of times the bigger fish are. I'm still just kind of working this log here off this uh, bluff wall. I'm not going to fish it much more because if I do decide to fish here in this area for the tournament, I definitely don't want to. I definitely oh, fish. I missed him. I definitely don't want to have sore lipped a bunch of these fish. So the fact that I've got two fish down here and I had that other one that followed it up, I followed my jig back to the kayak. I I know those fish here, so I'm confident with that. So. I'm going to make just a few more casts and I'll start making my way back down through here along this bluff wall. Just feel bump. <laughs> Thank us, another bluegill though. My buddy, he nailed it. <laughs> Love that feeling. There's another solid bluegill too. There he is. <laughs> Fun times, man. I haven't got to do as much ultralight fishing this year. This is, I've been doing those uh, kayak catfishing tournaments, the month long events. So I've kind of been having to, you know, spend the bulk of my time catfishing this year. Which, don't get me wrong, you don't have to twist my arm to go catfishing, but it has kind of limited my time to be able to get out and do ultralight fishing and go striper fishing and other types of fishing that I like to do. Fish on. And I want a big old bluegill, man. Big old bluegill. Shut the lid in right there, y'all. Just throw him on the board. I'd say he's probably around that eight inch mark also. Yep. Eight inches on the line right there. I'm telling you. Dang near every one of these bluegill I've got into today have been a good one. Alright guys, well unfortunately my time is up. I've been on the water about three hours now and I've caught a ton of fish out here. I got several nice bluegill in that eight inch, eight and a half inch range. And I got those two smallmouth, which is what I was really hoping to get on today. But uh, you know, those smallmouth, they weren't, neither one of them was worth riding home about 13, 14 inches. And I did hook a couple more that were just super tiny. They ended up spitting the hook. But uh, overall though, I had a great morning out here. Had some fun. Man, when you ultra high fishing, everything puts up a good fight. It is a blast to do. And uh, I enjoyed it, but unfortunately, I got some stuff to do this afternoon. Got to get out of here. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.